So in this mini build, a fellow by the name of Nietzsche, Nietz, Nietzsche, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce the name he uses, the nom de guerre he uses. He did a cool alternate version of the Michael Cthulhu logo using the correct breather. And uh, I asked him, could I, hey, is there any chance I could put that in my t-shirt store? And if so, how would we work out, like how much I owe you for it? And he said I could put it in the t-shirt store if I made him a dagger. So in this mini build, we're making him a uh, dagger. So it's going to be more fun, more free form than what I normally do in that I'm just going to search the workshop for cool bits and pieces and see what I can, what inspiration comes to me. So I found various interesting things around the shop, bits and pieces of stuff. And, um, this is brass. You could use this as the uh, handle of a sword. This guy is interesting shape, but it's too heavy. Um, I mean, it would be fine for a sword size thing, but it's too... Uh, for a knife, it would be silly. Um, but the, the, the mother load of interesting stuff I found around my shop... Not mother load. Most interesting thing, I'd forgotten I had it, was this guy. This is a blade from a paper guillotine. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. And the way this guy works is, I think the, it's bimetallic. This here is all regular steel. And so, and it's got a line of super hard, sharp stuff up it. Um, you can even see, because this one has been out in the wild, like just sitting in my shop, you can kind of see there's a line, like a, oh, I want that focus. There's a line where you can see the difference between the hardened stuff and the regular steel. drew lots of squiggly lines on it for a while and then I decided that like a straight blade was actually the coolest looking thing um, and I'm going to be welding the handle on Whoa. the camera is kind of upside down so it's messing up my ability to move into to the correct place steel. These are iron, I think. It's spitting at me. Now they're, you know, they're not quite iron because it would have been much easier to bend if it was. But Christ knows how old these things are. It's a 
behaving strangely as I try to weld it. Uh, these guys here are an inch back and forth. I'm actually lucky the handle tapers, so clamping it flat would have been hard, except for the fact that this is an inch and this is an inch. So all of that suspended, half inch off the table. Um, there's going to be people like talking about tangs and such. That I'm going to guess there's going to be people who can't weld properly. The There's a big huge bevel uh, in this. Now the limiting factor on this is not going to be the um, weld. The limiting factor on this is going to be whatever this ancient antediluvian... It's like an axle. It's an, like an axle off a wagon or something. Um, it is made out of, like if it's only made out of iron uh, as opposed to steel. It's, um, yeah, if you can weld properly and if you have the bevel ground and because of the look of this thing, I'm probably not going to uh, grind the weld back. Um, yeah, it's not going to, the weld's not going to break if you can weld properly. I suspended 3 eighths. This is, no, 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths. 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, middle of an inch. Yeah, that looks good. Now we weld it. Tiny knife. I gotta weld the other side of it now. It's burning my hand. So that's the weld. Um, no, I'm not gonna say cleaned up. The reason it's not my usual like grinding everything to a smooth transition. I don't know. It would look weird, like the because um, this is has, has this very rough texture, and this has a. It's not. It's you know it's slightly messed up. Um, but if I did grind this thing perfect. Uh, you know, like I normally do, it would stick out. Whereas now, that transition isn't very, um, you know, kind of, it suits it. It suits the look of this thing, which is kind of this weirdy found object knife look. How would you describe it? Don't want, I don't want anyone to use the word steampunk. That's not, that ain't right. But something, you know? <laughs> Make sure to use gloves if you're rubbing something down with acetone. Whoop. There's many things that are bad for you, but you can actively feel acetone being bad for you if you get it on your skin. Cold blue solution is... Oh, sprayer is garbage. Just the standard um, cold blue solution you can buy off Amazon. I'm getting a different sprayer. This is a drowned in oil after doing that. Just WD-40, nothing fancy. Three in one oil would probably be better if you're doing something like this at home. And because it's a small thing, you could actually uh, reasonably apply three in one oil to something this size. This will be an interesting experiment of why I don't like making black blades. We'll see what the um, slicing through stuff does to the um, finish.
because the uh, point of this was to do this like fast and free form um, this is actually out of order I should have checked this before but the thing I want to check is actually uh, is the, the, the this this blade too hard is it too hard and brittle to even remotely survive being a knife so hang on this is this, this is the other piece that I didn't use for making the blades one two three four six seven So after 10 aggressive whacks, there's like a little minor damage there and there and there and the only thing is now because like the aforementioned moving too fast is are they just from standard use aka bashing it into the wood or is it from bits of slag and stuff because I often use if it would be fair for a piece of slag, like if it managed to hit one of those wax came down on a piece of slag for a super hard piece of crap, like a piece of slag to... Hmm. The answer is to like temper the blade, just to heat, heat it up for a little bit, take some of the hardness out, because uh, this thing being glass hard wouldn't matter so much in a paper thing, because you could, you can be sure of like a precise even motion, machine motion every time. Whereas like for a knife, you cannot guarantee that you'll be coming down at a nice even angle every time. very short compared to what I normally use. You were good at it. I, I never claim to be good at these things. You could um, slice a whole bunch in a row. That guy cut up all the beer cans in that other video that's really cool. I wonder how many attempts that took. How much beer was wasted. Did I mention I made two of these? I can't remember whether or not I mentioned I made two of these. So, some good news and some bad news. Or rather, good news and expected news. The good news is the uh, tempering protected the blade there's no niches or scratches out of this at all uh, and the thing that could really have messed it up is that piece of wood I hit that was too hard for this thing to break properly that could have really messed up the blade if it was brittle but it seems to have survived just fine so tempering worked the expected news see all the scratches on it that's from the uh, wood scraping off the black oxide and um, so that's, I don't know, can you see the two, the, compare the two? And that's why I don't like blackening blades. I don't like blackening blades because it's so easy to scratch off. Now, people will suggest things like Cerakote or Duracote or any of those magic gun sprays, but you're not supposed to hack a flaming log into with a gun. So I'm not, uh, unless you're like using it properly by pulling the trigger or whatever, but like if you're, I, d I don't think any of those fancy gun paints would hold up to this either But the difference is the fancy gun paints would be a pain in the ass to redo At least the cold blue is a relatively painless process Provided your goddamn sprayer is working to just reapply So I've rubbed this guy down in acetone And going to spray it again and, and just re-blacken it and you won't be able to tell anything happened I might sand it a bit too 
So that's what it looks like sanded back. So depending on your mood, it's not like that would be impossible to live with either. Oh, come on. Does the, does the, does the gun blue destroy? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So as per my usual MO, one of these will be going to Mr. Nietzsche and the other one is up for charity auction. If you would like one of these, um, if, uh, send me a message, there'll be details in the video description of how to do that. Um, the usual small things I make, it, it's more a matter of them not being worth my time to make more of them if, you, if somebody in the future has seen this and wants it. But with these, the impossibility of me making another one is I could probably, this is an item you could probably buy, the blades. But the handles, like there's no way I could replicate the handles because of the uh, impossibility of finding a second set of antique parts, you know that exactly match this. I just, I don't even know where to begin, you know? And, um, what's the thing? These are smaller, so I mean, it might be a good, like, uh, you know, trainee sword for like a child. If you have a child that's looking to get into giant swords at some stage, this might be a good thing to train them up on. But anyway, there you go. Little tiny weirdy scramasaxes. Kids, kids, come here, the knives are done. Uh, uh, Ooh. Uh, now, they're too hot to eat now. Uh -huh. I put them in for 400 in an hour. Uh, but we can eat them when they cool down, okay? Okay, okay. Uh, which one do you want to eat? I want to eat this one. I okay. want to eat that one. Okay. Christopher, did you just burn yourself touching the knife? No. Okay, you have to, that's why you have to pay attention to what Dada has, says. I want Dada... that one. Okay, mm. om yum yum. Mmm. Yum. They look delicious. 